Yeah, the period shouldn't change because there nowhere in the formula is amplitude. There's no amplitude in the formula. There's only length and gravity. Did the length change? No. Are we still on planet Earth? Yeah, so uh, gravity didn't change, length didn't change, so the period shouldn't change. Now what if I took this same pendulum and I took it to Mars, where the gravity is 5 6 that of Earth? It would change. Would it be faster or slower? So take a second and figure this out and then chat with your neighbor. Spencer, make sure you include our guest. If you took this to Mars, where the G of Mars is about 0.8 G, or 8 meters per second squared, would the period go up or would the period go down? So take 10 seconds to figure it out. I'm sorry? Time as in more time or less time. Yeah, more time or less time. All right. If you think the Martian pendulum will take more time, give me a thumbs up. If you think the Martian pendulum will take less time, give me a thumbs down. Not voting, not voting, not, come on. Up, 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 up. Most of you think it's gonna take more time, and you're right. Because if you make a denominator smaller, then the number it represents has to get bigger. Make sense? But there's a radical in there. Does it matter, radical matter? No, not for what we're talking about, no it doesn't. So. If you make the G smaller, the denominator is smaller, the number it represents gets bigger. You've seen those videos where uh, the astronauts are jumping on the moon and it looks like they're floating and you're like, that can't be real. It's real. They're, the gravity that, that's pulling them down is only one sixth that of Earth. So they can jump and spend a lot more time in the air. We're all for basketball. Now on the other hand, if we go to Jupiter, where Jupiter's gravity is about two and a half times more than Earth, then if we went to Jupiter, the G would be gigantic, and the period would be small. So, whereas Earth, you get this, Jupiter, you get this. You try to jump on Jupiter, you're like jumping really fast. Would you feel like a heart attack on Jupiter or something? Like the blood? Um, there's a lot of pressure. You could somehow. It, yeah, if you could. Like, well, it is a gas giant. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So, if we diagrammed a pendulum with uh, vectors, you would find that at its furthest point, you would find that at its furthest point, it would have zero velocity and maximum acceleration. So, if you were to attach a force vector here, what direction would the force vector point? Let's attach a force vector to this diagram right here. Would it be up? Exactly. It would be down because of acceleration. So if you applied a force vector, it would have to be down because the acceleration is also down. And we just go ahead and call it FG. Wait. Okay. Any other vectors we care about? Not yet, yeah, not yet. Uh, and then as it approaches its equilibrium position, you would find a situation where you have maximum velocity but no acceleration. Should we draw any force vectors? Yeah. Yes, we should. What force vector should we draw? Yes, gravity still acts on it. But Mr. Byers, how come you said acceleration is zero? But there's a force there. How do we, how do we rectify this? Yeah, the string force. The string force. So this is FR, the restoring force from the string. Okay. 
So yeah, and hopefully, if the acceleration is zero in the vertical direction, uh, then hopefully they are the same. Hopefully you have a situation down there that the FR is equal to the FG. Scott. So say, like, I don't, I don't know. So say instead of a stream, you were to have like a, something stretchy like the spring, and you, were used to, and you were to use it as a pendulum, whenever it swings down to the bottom, even when it's at resting, as soon as it comes at rest, it still wouldn't be at equilibrium because the pendulum is the, the stream force is going to be all too, like, changing. Wait, OK. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so when you go to college and you're in your, your third year of, uh, of, of physics, um, then you can talk about what happens when the connecting restoring force is no longer constant and you get crazy spring action. <laughs> Notice what's happening at the center of at the equilibrium point. Oh, it's like uh, yeah, it's going up. So at the equilibrium point here, the actual spring force is less and it's more over here because you have multiple vectors involved. But when you talk about a spring, you're usually talking about one or two vectors just pointing this way or vectors this way. When you use a spring as a pendulum, you have another vector that has to point that way. Yeah, to basically bring it towards the equilibrium position. Yeah, fun, um, but if you're not gonna go into more advanced physics, just expunge all that out of your brain. Um, if you're gonna go into more advanced physics, then have fun, because um, then you get multiple vectors all playing at the same time. But yeah, we're gonna focus on springs traveling only up and down, and pendulums traveling back and forth with nothing going on in the middle. But good question, yeah, um, yeah, fun stuff. All right, um, give me a thumbs up if you're good so far. Wave your hand around if you have questions. All right, and then as it passes the equilibrium uh, and continues on, it travels back up to the point, and once again we get to this point here where we have our force going down like so. Now because this is first year physics, we're not gonna talk about, we're not going to diagram what goes on from here to here but you can kind of visualize what's going on. As it goes from here to here, the FR increases, exactly. The FR is a function of the weight of the thing, so up here FR is zero, and here FR is equal to FG, so the FR increases, you got a teeny tiny FR and a bigger FR and a bigger FR and a bigger FR, and it's constantly getting larger and larger as it approaches the equilibrium point. As it passes the equilibrium point, the FR decreases, gets smaller, until once again, it's zero, and all we care about is gravity. Can you visualize this? All right, questions? Thumbs up, you wanna move on? Moving on, all right. Let's look at a spring. <laughs> okay, so I think a spring is actually easier to visualize, but some people have pendulums are easier. Now, when the spring is hanging at its equilibrium point, you have an upward restoring force and a downward FG, pretend that, that, that W is actually an FG. We don't use W for weight anymore. So FR, FG. Okay. So that's where we are. At an equilibrium point, the upward restoring force is equal to the downward weight. Now, if I bring this down below the equilibrium point, the FR has to increase. Why does the FR increase? FG does not increase. FG is constant, but why does the FR increase? You guys have all played with springs before? Call it spring force, the springiness, spring force, the spring force stretchy force, action. The spring force increased because as you stretched it, it became longer, and like, so it wants to go back to that compressed form. Okay, so as you increase the stretchy of the spring, the, work. the force goes up. As you increase the stretchy of the spring, the force goes up. You know this. You like you you get those like elastic bands and you pull them like well this is easy. It's a little harder, a little harder, a lot harder. I don't know if I can do this, help me Dane. 
So, um, he's a big old gun. He's like, yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah, so uh, there's a, a formula. Hook's Law. Hook's Law tells us that the storing force of a spring is equal to some constant times its displacement. The restoring force of a spring is equal to some constant times its displacement from the equilibrium position. Now sometimes you see a negative in here. Sometimes you see a negative, meaning the restoring force is always opposing the motion, opposing the displacement. I don't care if you want to put the negative in there or not. Your uh, formula chart, and Rachel is a formula chart, your formula chart gives it a negative. We're using, are we using purple, are we using green, or are we using blue? Green? Okay. You could use that on all your tests and quizzes. So I think that the college board still puts a negative in front of it to basically say, if the force is going to be in an opposite direction, it's a restoring force, it's like a normal force. Uh, but there you go, that's Hooke's Law. It basically means the further you are away from an equilibrium position, the more force the spring will provide. Does that idea make sense? We're going to investigate this a little bit, and I'm going to let you uh, test a bunch of springs that I bought online years ago. So what does this look like? If you were to graph, let's pretend we're going to make a graph. If you were to graph the force versus the displacement of any normal spring, where should the graph start? Yeah, at zero. At zero displacement, x, the force should be what? Zero. What's the graph going to look like as we stretch the as we stretch the spring? If I put a force meter up there, which is what you're going to do, if I stretch the spring, what should the graph look like as I stretch the spring? Show me with your hand. Should it be like this? 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 Show me with your spring or with your hand. What's the spring? What's the graph going to look like? Is it going to be this? 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 No straight line. No, no graph at all. Most of you think it's going to be uh, more or less diagonal line. Like that. Yeah. And it is. Yeah. It's going to look like that. And uh, a line that looks like that has what formula? Y equals mx plus b. But here's the cool thing. Guess what b is? Zero. Because there's, if you have no displacement, you have no spring force. So that makes it y equals mx, f equals kx. What's the slope? The slope is k, the spring constant. Slope is the spring constant. Slope is the spring constant. Make sense? Yeah. So that's what k is. K is the, the spring constant. Spring constants can be as small as like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. I don't have any mechanical pencil, but you do. So like the, the springs in your pens and your pencils like have a spring constant of like a tenth. Got to stop saying like the spring constants in your pens and pencils will be around a tenth. The spring constants that are in your car that keep your car from bouncing when you go over a pothole are in the tens of thousands. Yeah. So here, is that a strong spring or a weak spring? Weak. Yeah, pretty weak spring. It means as you stretch it, the force doesn't change much. And then strong spring or, or weak spring? Strong. strong. So this is a strong spring, which has a high K. This is a weak spring, which has a low K. All right, so let's look at the formula. First of all, does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense to you. If you want to talk about restoring force more, wave your hand around. All right, so um, the uh, period of a spring. 
Here's the spring is 2 pi m over k. Boy, does the size of the spring matter? No. Does the mass attached to it matter? Yes. 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 So when you're looking at the period of a spring, all we care about is the mass that's attached to the spring and the spring constant. That's going to give you the period. Here's the bananas thing. If you were to take this slinky, this setup, and you were to measure the period right now, and then take this whole kit and caboodle to Mars, would the period change? No. There is no G up there. There's no G. So the period wouldn't change. The period depends only on the mass of the spring and the uh, spring constant. So this is a uh, 50 grams. We'll look at look at the period here. 50 grams. I'm going to put a 100 gram mass, and hopefully it won't bottom out. The spring gets weaker all the time. But um, take a look at the period. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Yes. You said you could be Mars, it would change, but isn't uh, FG quality of mass? Mm. The FG would change, but the spring force would counteract that FG. The period of the bouncy won't change. Okay, so I'm going to add, I'm going to double the mass. I'm going to swap out the 50 for the 100. Is the period going to go up or go down? So I take five seconds and convince your neighbor you're right. I'm right. I'm right just because. You're wrong, I'm right. That's good. There's a bigger number on top. Am I right or are you wrong? Let's figure this out here. It's got a big, beautiful spring. Best spring here. You've never seen a spring like this. I'm going to name this. I'm going to name this a hook mass. It's going to go down because the period is going to. Let's take a look. More, more mass. Uh, period up or period down? Give me a thumbs up. You think period up? Give me a thumbs up. You think period down? So you think it's going to take? Most of you think it's going to take more time? Let's find out. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Four one thousand. One takes a little bit longer. It took two two seconds before. Now it takes about three, a little more than three. So yeah, more mass, more period. Oh, more mass. Yeah. More mass, okay. more problems. More, more mass, more problems. I know, right? Diabetes. Like diabetes. Okay. Okay. All right then. Um, this is something we're going to talk about uh, in a lab, which is one of my favorite labs later on. Is it this week? Yeah, it is next week. All right, dampers. Dampers and pushing. Um, a damper is used to create tons and tons of frictional movement, basic friction against movement. Um, a damper doesn't change the period, only changes the amplitude. Okay. For instance, if you were to put this thing in like a container of water, you were to bounce it back and forth in a column of water, the water would damp the motion, but it wouldn't change the amplitude, or it wouldn't change the period. It would only change the amplitude. It was actually kind of fun. Similarly, when you push your little brother on a swing, because he wants you to push him on a swing, and on a swing set, you push him on a swing set, when you give him a push, does his amplitude, or does his period change? No. no, because he's still on Earth, G, and the length of the swing hasn't changed, L, so the actual period of him doesn't change. What does change is his amplitude. So when you reinforce motion or you damp motion, it changes the amplitude, but doesn't change the period. Okay, questions? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on. Wave your hand around if you want to chat about it again. All right. Okay, so driven harmonic motion is what happens when you add a force at intervals that is equal to the period. And that creates mechanical re resonance. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to write all this down, great. Don't write it all down. Um, just kind of interesting, it's kind of neat. So hundreds of years ago, literally thousands of years ago, the Roman legions would, uh, they were big guys, they were usually somewhere in the odds of 200 to 300 pounds, big huge, the biggest guys you could find, even though they're, so let's say just 200 pounds, 80 kilograms, 
and uh, they're walking. Boom, boom, boom. They got their bronze spear, and their bronze shield, and they got their armor and their big boots. They weigh about 300 pounds. Boom, 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 boom. One of the strategies that the Roman legionnaires, legionnaires controlled a thousand men, that's why they're called legionnaires. Guess how many men a centurion? Uh, 100. 100. So a centurion, 100, a legion, a thousand, so on. Anyway, so the Roman legionnaires, one of the strategies they would have is to have all their men march in the same cadence. Boom, 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 boom. Because you would hear them coming hundreds of miles away. You would be like, what is that? Oh no. They can make the ground shake. We don't stand a chance. So when the Roman legionnaires are walking up to your, your town, there's a really good chance you'd be like, yeah, forget this, we surrender. You can have the town, it's yours. It's a good strategy, win a battle without actually fighting. But there was one glitch. If your Roman legionnaire told you to approach the town, boom, 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 everybody's marching together, and they came to a bridge, a wooden bridge, which is usually anchored with you know dirt, mud, maybe cement, but probably not, you wouldn't want to go over the bridge all in the same cadence. Boom, boom, boom. Because guess what that would, what that would happen to the bridge? Oh. Yeah, the bridge would vibrate, and vibrate, and vibrate, and eventually it would dig itself out of its foundations. Then you just drown your army, which would be really embarrassing. You're like, oh, those Romans. Yeah, we can take them. They just drown half their army in the river. Um, so when uh, the Roman legionnaires would approach a bridge, you'd get one team going, boom, boom. Their team going, boom, boom, boom. boom. Another team going, bop, 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 bop. You know what so they changed their cadence so they wouldn't create mechanical resonance in the bridge and dig the bridge out from the foundations and drown the army. Okay. Was that after they drowned one army? <laughs> so they, probably, they probably figured it out after they knocked down a bridge and drank, drowned the army. Okay. Um, let's see if this video, sometimes video works in PowerPoint, sometimes I have to show it. Let's see. It's going to work. It's going to work? You never really know. Okay, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna exit out and show you what this looks like in real life. Uh, IRL. IRL. Yep, IRL. Here we go. Um, so back in the uh, the 40, 30s and 40s, there was this bridge. Where is there we go? Okay, and so there was a bridge over the Tacoma Narrows. So the Tacoma Narrows um, links parts of the Puget Sound up in Washington. And it's very, very windy. 